about y'all, but if y'all ain't feeling the Holy Spirit, uh, we need to re we need to start that one all over again. Many of y'all have gotten to know me. You know that I, I like knowing what's going on and how to prepare these sermons. And uh, I, sometimes the Holy Spirit just don't let you do that. Uh, it, it's 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 good to have a couple of visitors here. Um, they may be the first time that here, at least in my knowledge, they might have been here in the past. Pretty sure that they have. But I got to meet this couple. I'm not going to bring them up or anything, but I met this couple at a revival that that had a lot to do in, in changing and spiritually forming me as a, as a person. Not just me as a pastor, but me as a child of God. I used to come up here with pages front and back. When I first started, it was three pages front and back, and I just read the circles. I was, man, y'all were intimidated. I was scared. Y'all know what the, I know some of y'all know what it's like to be up in front of people for five seconds. And I had to be up here for, oh my goodness, and, and I read. Uh, y'all see the notes now, right? See, one, one of the things that the Holy Spirit slapped me upside the head with on that, during that revival was, and I love my Pentecostal brothers and sisters. Um, I may not agree with all my Pentecostal brothers and sisters, but they have this ability to listen to the Holy Spirit when it comes to speaking the Word of God. And as much as I like to plan, the Lord is, is teaching me a little bit to, guess what? Listen, it's not your word, Daryl. <laughs> Newsflash, it's mine. So I started thinking along the lines, and I've got some the five sermons planned out. I wish I had a whole lot more, but that's, that's not how it is. And it's all about rebooting, restarting. We're going to look at different aspects, our, our focus, our direction. And again, it's, none of this is my, my determination. It's all his. So if you got a problem with it, you, you, I'm, just, I'm, just the, I'm just the speaker. You've got to go to the author. You want to talk to the author? Man, the best place to find the author is at your knees. And I was thinking about this reboot. I got here, and um, I, I might step on some board members' toes. It's all right. I'll, they'll, they'll fire me later. But the, the computer was a little bit less than updated. <laughs> Slow running. Internet, we had DSL, y'all. You know those little spinning wheels? I got to see those all the time. We don't see them anymore because we got fiber now, but I just get frustrated. You ever get that on your phone? You want to hit control alt delete. Y'all know what you, any old schoolers know what control alt delete does? Brings up a window and says, what do you want to stop? And you can stop whatever you want to stop. Unless you get really frustrated and you get, delete! And then the, the thing's, okay, we'll, we'll clean it all out. No, 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 not that far. Frustrated at computers or electronic devices. You ever get frustrated enough to where you want a factory to reset it? Anybody tech heads are, are cringing right now. A factory reset? Ooh, that's some frustration right there. You know what a factory reset does? It takes you all the way back to the beginning. It deletes your contacts. It deletes your emails. It deletes your text message. It deletes everything. All those passwords that you think is safe on your, on your phone, which my wife will tell you it ain't safe. All those passwords gone. Anybody ever accept the, the recommended password that's got like 85 characters and they're all the different jumbo? Yeah, guess what? That one's gone too. Good luck remembering that fat password. That's what a factory reset does. Well, friends, that's what a reset is and a reboot is in the spiritual world too. See, we pollute it. And I say we as in believers. If you're a believer, this is for you. If you're not a believer, guess what? You can start off with a, a clean slate. Let, let that be known to you. But if you're a believer and you've known Je you know who God is, you know who Jesus, you've had a relationship, but you kind of kind of strayed. Maybe he's taking a back seat. Maybe he's not taking a back seat, but Pastor, I go to Bible studies. I know I hear all about the women's Bible study and how everybody cracks their book Monday morning. I ain't gonna say any, I ain't gonna name any names. I ain't gonna I ain't gonna point any fingers. I get phone calls and texts. We're, we're in, what, what chapter in Genesis are we at, Pastor? 
It's okay. All you have to do is scroll and say, hey, next week, and you go all the way to the end of the video, and it says next week, we're going to be on chapter such and such. I still get texts. Sometimes we, what we do is a checklist. Why? Because we're busy. We get inundated with other processes taking up our time. That's what happens with computers when they start to slow down. When you hit that control alt delete, and then there's that text box that comes up, and there are about 100 processes that are going on in the background that you have no idea. And you go to close, close one out and it says, are you sure? Because if you do this, like, eh, maybe not. But see, we get inundated with processes in our life. I got this process at work. I got this process at home. I got this process at school. I got to do this with the kids. I got to do this with the parents. I got to do this over here. I got inundated with the processes of sermon writing. That sometimes you just need to pray. You have to stop. Allow the Holy Spirit to erase all those processes. We have one of our own that, that later mom to rest this week. And I'm going to tell you, for someone who likes to plan his sermons, it's not, the funerals are not a, an easy thing to do. I got to meet with them and I had a great fellow, time of fellowship with them at lunch. But the first thing I had to do is I had to go reset. I had to go to a place that was quiet. And I had to stop all those background processes. Because I needed one thing. I needed the Holy Spirit to tell me, what do you want me to say about a woman I've never met? For a woman I care deeply about. See, now is the time to reset. And now is the time to reboot. It's a do-over like we used to claim as kids. Man, I love that. And when you play in hide-and-seek, you're about to get set. You tag, oh, time out, do-over. Y'all ever do that? No, just us big kids that couldn't run that fast. We get to do a do-over. Over the next month or so, we're going to look to reset our soul. We set our purpose, our value, our direction. I want to encourage us today. We can reset. Church, can you say that? Say, I can reset. I can reset. reset. So a, couple, a couple people back here were smiling when they said it. That's good news. The fact our Savior says, hey, I, I get it. Sometimes you walk away. Sometimes you stray. But right now, now you can say, I can reset. Our, our, our passage is out of 2 Corinthians 4. Verses 16 through 18, and it starts off with not losing heart. If you could, let's stand as we read the Word of God. Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 16. Therefore, we do not lose heart. Church say, do not lose heart. We do not lose heart. Oh, that sounded depressing as all get out. Do not lose heart. Thank you. Though outwardly we are wasting away. Can I get an amen there? Yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes not on that what is seen, but what is unseen. Since what is seen is temporary. But what is unseen is eternal. Yeah. Ooh, glory. I can just read this over and over again and say, forget this whole sermon. What is seen is temporary. But what is unseen is eternal. Let's pray. Father, this is your word. Oh, let your word carve us. Let your word mold us. Let your word inspire us. Let your word give us strength. And courage to say now is the time for a reset. It's in Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen and amen. You may be seated. I bring up this a lot because I, I look forward to my, my weekly visits in the jail. I actually got one of moms, one of the moms is watching today. I think it's Mary, right? O'Conn? Is that Mary O'Conn? Am I right there? I'm, I'm asking my person in the back, is it Mary O'Conn? Y'all say hi, Miss Mary. Hi, Miss Mary. <laughs> I meet with her son, and I ask, you know, I, I generally have a direction of where I want to go as 
far as Bible studies, but I've been told you know a little bit about the Word. That's awesome. Where do you want to study? He says Ecclesiastes. I'm like, are you sure? That's a hard study. Because it's very dreary in the beginning, but then it turns a corner at the end of chapter 2. When the author is talking about from the flesh that he's looking at, then he starts to look at it from God's eyes. See, this is what, he, what we're talking about here is that spiritual renewal, one, it is a daily quest. It happens day after day after day. Not just the days that our Bible studies fall on. Not just the days that Sundays fall on. It's a daily quest. It is a daily effort. Y'all go shopping at Walmart. It's a daily effort in line, too. We're having a prayer vigil, and we still have time back there. My daughter took, I was shocked that my daughter took the first half, first half hour of service, not the last, because you know, now she gets to hear my sermon. She could have had every opportunity. I figured that this would be the hour everyone would sign up for. But we have a daily uh, a prayer vigil that's 24 hours. We have more hours back there. Pray for an hour. Your community, the church, the church leaders, we do this because we start off, we want to start off our year in prayer. But I pray that from midnight to, to 1, I'm going to pray again from 11 to midnight tonight. I'm going to start and finish it. And I'm out with the dogs because I've got a little peppy dog that, that gets really anxious and anxiety ridden when there's loud booms and there was some fireworks last night and she's going everywhere and all over the place. If she was a little smaller, I would have mistaken her for a rat. She's just running everywhere. So I took her outside and 12, 15, 12, 20 and I have a neighbor across the street used to come to this church. They park outside on the, on, the, on the street. And then I am utterly shocked that their car did not get run into. There's a four-way stop where I live. It was just, a, it was just a, an observation for most people. It was a suggest, suggestion. It's a daily quest. I'm, I'm wondering how is it that they, that they haven't gotten into this They've lived there for as long as I've lived there. But isn't it like that when we get so stuck in a rut that we make the same mistakes over and over again? We want, we have to learn by our own mistakes and then sometimes we still don't learn. We, we need to remember that when we're on our spiritual walk, we have to make daily changes. Ah, uh, we don't like that word change, do we? Change is hard, isn't it? Change is frustrating. Change means there's something wrong here. Friends, there's always something wrong here. The inward renewal points to our spiritual and moral beings. Spiritual and moral. I got to thinking about that. We can all sit and talk about how there's a moral decline in this country. A spiritual decline in this country. Um... Transgenderism was never a thing when I was a nine-year-old. It is now. It's not because kids have chosen to use that as a vocabulary term. It's because us adults have gotten so far away because we're focused on ourselves. Every one of those people running those stop lines was focused about themselves. Forget everybody else. They, I don't even know if they saw me, with, and I'm hard to miss walking a little dog. See, when we're so focused on ourselves, we, we have our eyes so off of God. <clears throat> Romans 12, 1 and 2 instructs us to have a renewal of our minds, which means it can happen. See, if, if, the, if the word says we can, something should happen, that doesn't mean, well, that's impossible. Because we all, we talked about the impossibility or the possibility of impossibility last week, right? God kind of specializes in the impossible. Oh, I'm too set in my ways. Well, you're the first candidate. I'm a salesman, or I was a salesman. Really, Lord, you want me to be a pastor? Where? Of I-69, where? It's impossible. No, no, it's not. Renew of our minds. We can renew daily because we are new creations. I think a lot of times we forget that. Us Christians, we, 
And again, this is more focused for those that are walking in faith. We forget that we're a new creation. And if we look back at that, at that text, 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, We are a new creation. The new is here. The gold is gone. We forget that the old is gone. <clears throat> That's hard to hear. Our old ways are gone. Oh, but they snuck back into me. That's why we need a reboot. Isaiah 40, 31 says that those who wait on the Lord will renew their strength. We don't wait on our problems. We don't wait on our, the drama. Oh, has there been some drama this week? Oh, my goodness. We don't wait on the, the circumstances that we see. We wait on what we don't see. We wait on him, and he will renew our strength. I often speak to folks and I ask them, do you have the I got this itis? It's a medical term. I got this itis. If I can just fix this in my life or I can fix that in my life, I got this itis. We wait on the Lord and he will renew our I got this itis. No, he will renew his strength in us. It's through him that we can accomplish anything that he desires, Right? It's through him, his strength. Oh, you silly Christians use him as a crutch. You gosh darn right I do. I use him as two crutches if I got to. Because sometimes it's hard to get around in this world. Sometimes it's hard to bear the burdens of family and, and, and everything that's going on behind the scenes. I need those crutches. Why? Because I'm stubborn. I usually don't wait on him. He said, if you just wait on me. I will renew your strength. We pick up the cross daily as it's discussed in every one of those Gospels. Colossians 3.10 says, We are created in the image of the Creator. But I don't look too much like a Creator. It's time for a reboot. It's time to restart. Titus 3.5 He saved us not because of righteous things that we had done, but because of His mercy. He saved us through the washing of rebirth and renewal by our own doing, right? <clears throat> nope. The renewal by the sales ad price on, on, nope. The renewal by the Holy Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit that renews. Who's the Holy Spirit? God. If you wait on him, God, don't you love that when, when, when a song can work together with with the writings of, in Titus, they weren't written anywhere near the same time frame or the same neighborhood, yet they, they, they kind of correlate with one another. It's the image of God that we're renewed to. It's His holiness that we're renewed to. It's the unseen. But you don't look like the rest of the Good, I don't want to look like the rest of this world. I don't want to think like the rest of this world. But it's so hard, Pastor. People hate me. Yeah, Jesus said that too. If, if, if people hate you because of me, guess what? They hated me first. We are not called to be part of the world. We're part of the called to live in the world, but to be set apart. And the only way we're going to be set apart is if we're in his image. In his image. That inward renewal is of our spirit and our moral beings points us right back to his image. We weren't made in his image as in we all have to have beards or curly hair or blonde hair or really skinny or whatever. No, we're made in his image in the moral and spiritual beings. Holiness. Fix our eyes on what's eternal and everlasting possessions. Oh, this was hard for me. I was a salesman for many years. Things were very important to me. I got an award back on my on my on my wall. I used to hold, I used to hold that award. It was it's called the Diamond G Award. I worked for a company called Gordon's Jewelers, and Diamond G's were only given out to the top stores. I was in the middle of nowhere in Clarksville, Tennessee, before Clarksville was what it is today. <clears throat> Small little town. 
And I went from worst to first. I got this award, boy. I, I, I had that award proud on every wall, that I, every office that I had. Now it's up there to remind me that, you know what, things are nothing but, nothing but things. It's right next to... It's right next to one of my licenses because you know what? My God gave me my license to preach. He also gave me the diamond G. The diamond G means nothing to me in worldly ways. But it is a time of my life that he prepared me for where I am at right now. That's why it's up there. I've taken a different focus on it. But see, we, we have to fix our eyes on what's eternal. Not the momentary and the scene. Focus on one things that do not fade. Man, I gotta, I gotta do this and I gotta get this because I have this coming up. Will it fade? Jesus stated not to lay up our treasures on earth where moths and rust destroy and thieves can steal. Hmm. I'm gonna go out on a limb and say this could mean your spouse and your children too. But a lot of times we put them in a, in a, on a pedestal, and we we do anything and everything for for our spouse. And I love my bride; do not get me wrong, but she is loved second in my life. He told us not to serve both masters, and you can't serve both God and money. It's, well, it doesn't mean that you can't have money, but the love of it is is, is when you're serving it. And when you're doing anything and everything for an animate object, even, even ourselves, we're, we're going to fade away at one point, right? Our flesh will become dust, right? We will expire. But yet we put our spouses on a pedestal, or we put pastors on a pedestal. Please do not. That pedestal will break. My knees are not strong enough to withstand a fall from a pedestal. You can see that it's humorous or you can see that it's truthful. It's both. I can't tell you the number of pastors that have been put on pedestals and when they mess up morally, the whole world comes down crashing on them hard. They wouldn't have been on that pedestal had somebody not put them on there. See, pastors are something that moth will eat away at too. The world kind of takes away at too. Buildings, I've seen church, good, good meaning church people put a building on a pedestal. A mortgage is more important than people. What are we putting on a pedestal? Where is our sight? Where are our eyes fixed on? Are our eyes fixed on our own bodies? Are our eyes fixed on our own bank account? Are our eyes fixed on our own pastor? Are our eyes fixed on our own spouse? Or are our eyes fixed on the only one that has supplied every last one of them? The battles we fight are not flesh and blood, but against the spiritual forces of evil. <clears throat> a lot of people will ask me, it's, well, well, how do you handle this, this social topic? I pray. I'm going to tell you uh, that this whole deal of transgenderism is it's an effect of sin. Does it anger me? No, it, it hurts me. Because there are people that are so lost that are questioning what the hand of God has done. When someone walks away, I, I saw I saw a short reel. You guys know that I've admitted to y'all that I'm kind of a kind of hooked on those little 15, 30 second reels. You can waste hours watching those stupid things. And one of them said, Do not we need to stop setting a place at the table. For someone who only gets their order to go. And I'm thinking, yes, absolutely. And then I was like, eh, mm, mm, mm. no. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to repop. No, I'm not going to do that. I can't. We're called to come to a table. Plates have been made for us. I personally have been called to set that place for you. You come and you get it to go, you're, it's going to hurt me. We've had plenty of people that have gotten their orders to go from this church in the last year. We keep setting plates. 
Why do we keep setting? Because that's our job. That's what he's called us to do. And there's going to be people that say, no, I don't want a place at the table. It's going to be between them and the Lord. Well, I'm going to come in here. I'm going to sit. I'm going to eat until what you give me doesn't feed me anymore. Then I'm going to go on down the road. We have a lot of folks to do that too. But yet they still have a place at the table. See, Jesus said to set a place, to set up a table and go out and invite people. He didn't say to put in to conditions on those invitations, did he? Go out and invite people. My prayer is that when you come to this table, and there have been a lot of people that have done this, that you get hungry and you get thirsty and you say, Pastor, I want to help set the table. I got this inlet. We're going we're gonna to expand this table. I, I, I want to set some places for the table. And when I tell you that there's going to be some people that get their orders to go, there's going to be some people that are going to eat for a while and then leave. There's going to be some people that say, you're, you're nuts. I would never sit at that table because that church has got, has got a crazy fat man that, that runs it. It's okay. We're going to wash off that plate. We're going to, we're going to, we're going to, we're going to set that, that, that placement right there for that person to come right back home. That's my prayer. See, we've had a lot of people do that in this last year, too. You want to know who some of those people are? If you're watching online, go back and look at our live streams every single Sunday during the month of December. We've had somebody light a, a candle, an Advent candle wreath. And every one of those people have stepped up and said, you know what, Pastor? I want to help set the table. Instead of wearing a bib to the church, maybe we should put on our aprons. For all these reasons, we're encouraged not to lose heart. He tells us in the very beginning, do not lose heart. Don't give up. Why would he say not to give up? Because he knows things are going to get to the point where it's, we want to give up. Do not lose heart. We don't need to be troubled. James started off his book. Consider it joy. Consider it joy. That you're going to have some hardships. He started his book off that way. See, we can't lose hope. Why? Because we have hope to lose. We, we had a whole sermon about hope in, in December. That's one of those gifts he gives us. We have hope. We can go through the chaos of this world, whether there's things that are happening that are just eat us to the core, and know that we have a hope of what we cannot see, that unseen faith, that unseen possession, that eternal possession that we have hope in. We have hope. Faith is the things hoped for and things not yet seen. We have reasons to hope. Does anybody have a reason to hope here this morning? Amen. Anybody have a reason to hope here this morning? Yes. Glory. We have a young lady that had to bury her mom this week. Then keep her from the house of the Lord. My heart broke for that family. We have another person who lost three people in a matter of four or five months. That person's not here. Someone just said they've lost five. Look around. People are missing because they're hurt. People are missing because they're, they're losing that hope and they need that hope needs to be restored. I see a brother that I haven't seen in almost a year. That gives me hope. I see a daughter that signed up for an hour of prayer and says, you know what? I'm going to do it anyway. Instead of changing my time, I'm going to do it anyway. And sat in my office and prayed over this church for an hour. If a 16-year-old can do it, what's your excuse? Why? Because a 16-year-old has hope. I don't know about y'all, but I, I couldn't be a teenager in high school right now. We have hope. And when we see people that are losing that hope, it's our job 
to set the table and show them where the hope is at. Romans 15, 13. Got one, that one highlighted too. I need to go to that one. May the God of hope, see it's not our hope. It's his hope. May the God of hope fill you with joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope. He's not one to give you just a little bit of hope. This is a buffet, y'all. He wants you to have second, thirds, and fourth. He wants you to be so full with hope that you leave miserable with hope. Ain't that a contrary of terms right there. Y'all might want to tweet that later. God wants us to be miserable with hope by the power, oh, I love this part, by the power of the prosperity preacher, right? No, by the power of the Holy Spirit. Huh. We have hope. That's one of those gifts that we receive during the Advent season. We faint not in some translations. We don't need to bend to the pressures of the world. We do not need to fear. See, God says, I'll be with you wherever you will go. Why? Because I already know the plans that I have for you. If you just listen. Fear not, he says, 365 times. There's a reason. Fear is the opposite of hope. He wants you to hope. I know the plans I have for you. See, those plans are unseen. They're the eternal stuff that we're supposed to fix our eyes on. Friends, over the next four weeks or so, we're going to look at how we're going to restart but you have to make the decision on your own. I can't make it for you. How easy will it be for us to reset if we look to the renewal of our spiritual and moral beings and fix our gaze on what's important to him and not ourselves? Is it important to you, Father? Let's pray. Father, we... Uh, we have a lot of reasons not to hope in this world. Father, sometimes we need that reset button to be hit. We need to be reminded of what that hope is for. We need to listen to those that you set in our path that can restore that hope through, or you can restore that hope in us through them. But Father, we need to reset our gaze. Father, we need your help to stop looking at what will fade. The problems of this world, the addictions, the anxieties, the depression, the loss. Help us to fix our gaze on the hope that we have. And sometimes, Lord, it's hard for us to do. We need your help. But all we got to do is say, Lord, here I'm here at the table. Feed me with your hope. Father, we give this to you. Guide and direct us in, this, in, these, in the weeks, weeks ahead that we may reset our spiritual walk with you. Reset us in a way that is just shouts from the rooftops that I am a child of God and you need to get some of the stuff that I've got over here. Help us to be a spotlight in a very dark world. Listen, Jesus, holy name we pray. Amen and amen. For those that are watching online, I want to say, know that I love you, know that I'm praying for you. We are going to be taking communion in-house. Um, if you're local and you want communion, reach out to the, reach out to the church, as always. No, I love you, I'm, I'm praying for you. Have a great rest of the week.